The number of domestic violence complaints, according to the Social Affairs Ministry, was close to 10 times the number per week during the first month of the coronavirus lockdown. The ministry received 512 complaints between May 13 and May 20, an average of 73 a day, compared to an average of 8 per week during the first month of the lockdown, which started in mid-March. Eight women have been murdered in Israel since the start of the novel coronavirus outbreak, two of them at the end of April. This does not include the number of suicides of women who were abused. Reports say as many as 12 have killed themselves. Police blame the rise in domestic violence on exacerbating tensions as people were confined together by lockdown measures. The economic and psychological pressures led to a dramatic increase in the number of reports of violence, most of them from women who suffered violence violence in the past and some from women experiencing violence for the first time. Women's rights activists have predicted that violence could grow even as restrictions are eased. But according to social services, domestic violence goes much farther than the coronavirus. For years, Israel has been suffering from the domestic abuse phenomena. What allows violence against women to happen so frequently in Israel? Women go to the police, the police send them home because uh, they have nothing to do because they, they have a hard time to establish uh, a case. Then if uh, the man gets uh, um, uh, you know, a, a court order to be away from the home, uh, still he has a warrant but nobody can take care of it. You know, if he goes to the home, to the house, Nobody can take care of it. That's why we have a law here that we're trying to pass for electronic bracelets. So we, the police will get a beep when the man enters or gets near the house. Otherwise, even if the authorities want to help us, uh, we don't have enough social workers and we don't have enough money for social workers because the, there is a, a, a national program plan, a strategic plan for uh, decreasing domestic violence, but the money wasn't transferred. It's 250 million shekels. The, most of the money wasn't transfer, tran transferred, so you don't have enough social workers. You don't have people in police departments that will talk to you in your own language. If you talk uh, Amharic or Tigrinit or Arabic or Russian, and there are many people in Israel who speak these languages and there's no one to talk to them. And if they only speak this language and there, you know, there's domestic violence, they have nothing to do. Um, we don't have enough uh, welfare system, and uh, it's not strong enough, and it's and the solutions don't work together. You don't go to a one-stop shop where you get everything treated. Mm -hmm. You go and you come back and it's hard to establish a case and then, you know, if he gets a warrant or... then it all melts and you, you end up with a man that hurts you in your own domestic sphere where you're supposed to be most uh, secured and uh, we see a lot of women that uh, pay with their lives eventually. But it's not only with their lives, it's also financial violence and just domestic violence. It's not only the women who are murdered who are approximately 20 year, a year, but now we see in Corona, in COVID-19, that it's more. So that's really hard. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a lot of... Uh, uh, social workers who are not working now because they're in a strike and it's a very just strike but it's a problem for women who are suffering from violence so we are in a loop, we are in a loop.
Activists say that in Israel, the blood of women is worthless. Women are forced to be silent as authorities do not support their plight. Some are even calling for a minister for murdered women. They cite the freshly formed Unity Cabinet, the largest cabinet in Israel's history, with a large range of new ministerial positions due to political settlements so that one party can back off the other party because they have a seat in the new cabinet. According to the Naamad Women's Advocacy Group, Israeli women have no backing, no support, and no therapeutic framework. According to Naamad, there is no budget and no suitable resources, and there is no safety, neither in the streets, work, nor at home. When it comes to the murder of women in Israel, the regime in Tel Aviv has no method of prevention and no real-time solutions. Are women safe in Israel? We need to understand something very important. When a woman come to a police station and speak with police officer, this is very, very hard to, to, to that woman. And usually it's happened after many times she get hit by a person in the family, usually her husband or boyfriend. And when she get there and the behavior that they, they ask her some question, how you stay there, how you don't run away, you sure it's happened to you? And a lot of kind of question like this. So this is like, they put her in the situation that maybe she's the criminal. And women in, in, in a lot of situation like this say, okay, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't believe they really believe me. I don't believe they can help me. And a lot of times they really don't help. And this is a very bad situation that we stay. Everything else that is life-threatening, the regime proposes prevention in advance and real-time solutions. Women blame the regime for being silent and not making the issue of domestic violence a top priority. The issue of domestic violence or violence against women in Israel is not new. Violence against women was always prevalent. Just in 2018, 25 women were killed due to such violence. Another 21 in 2019 were also killed. A report last year showed that three out of four women suffered from some type of abuse, whether it be in the streets, home, or at work. Many of those women filed police complaints prior to their deaths out of concern for their safety, but nothing was done. And I think the, the big problem of that is that the government and Israel don't see the violence against women as her problem. I mean that when something happens, usually you see that they just say this is a problem of a group of people, a problem of a community, problem of some group. It can be Arabic, it can be Ethiopian, it can be Russian, it can be uh, Arabic Jew, but it's not an Israel problem. And this is the big problem, the way the government see that and how they just ignore that over and over again. Israelis and others continue to delve into the topic on social media. According to Michael Safian, in Judaism, there is a principle that taking a life is like killing the whole world. Any death would be too many. The regime should care about domestic violence, car accidents, and other causes of death beyond just terrorism. Oretz Israel says that she agrees. She shares that she just recently divorced my abuser. Thank God, too, she says. No woman anywhere deserves any kind of abuse, physical or otherwise. Masi says that woman abuse in Israel is an awful problem on a personal and national level. Something should be done. All Israeli citizens deserve safety and dignity. Vic says that domestic violence against the woman, man or child must be treated equally and punished severely. I think that uh, um, the authorities in Israel, uh, police and the prosecutors, state prosecutors, are children of uh, 
the state which has historically devalued women. So naturally, they are not going to aggressively investigate crimes against women. They're not going to pass legislation that is going to ensure equality for women, equality uh, in jobs and in pay and in opportunities uh, like men have. And uh, similar, it's very important for Israelis to serve in the army and uh, women are marginalized in the army as well. Um, there, you know, until this year, I don't think there was a female uh, pilot in the Air Force, and that's one of the most prestigious roles um, in the Israeli military. So, uh, when Israeli women uh, bring charges of rape or, or sexual abuse against a man, the police are loath to investigate. If they do investigate, they don't do a very energetic investigation. אני חושבת שכן צריכים לבדוק את העניין תמיד לעומק. יש הרבה פעמים גם תלונות שווא, שנשים מתלוננות והגבר לא עושה שום דבר. גם את זה צריך לבדוק, ולא ישר לתת הרחקות ודברים כאלה. אבל בואו נגיד שהבדיקה צריכה להיות קצת יותר מעמיקה, כי זה בעיה לדעת באמת מה אמת ומה לא. תקן כל בן אדם אלימות בכל בחינות, לא במשפחה, ברחוב, בכל מקום אלימות. אלימות באה מזה שבן אדם לא ממש אוהב את עצמו, הוא מתחיל להיות לא מעריך את עצמו, לא אוהב את עצמו. אז הוא שואלים או שהוא נותן למישהו להיות אלים איתו. אמרת על הנשים שנדיבו... בטח, כל הזמן אנחנו שומעים, מזעזע. מזעזע? מזעזע מאוד. מה את חושבת זה כאילו מסכן את ה... את החברה הישראלית באופן כללי. מה מסכן? האלימות. האלימות שיש. זו הכי סכנה הגדולה שיש. את עוברת ברחוב, במכוניות, מצפצפים לך, את לא עונה, סכינים. כן, קרה שגם רצחו על חניות ועל... מה אני מדברת עליו זה האלימות. בתוך המשפחה הישראלית. האמת שאני לא חוויתי את זה, אבל אני שמעתי הרבה, ואני חושבת שהן צריכות ישר ללכת להתלונן, אבל יש פה בעיה שהמשטרה מעלימה עין, המשטרה לא עושה הרבה. את חושבת שצריך כאילו לעשות יותר מבחינת הרשויות? הרשויות, בדיוק, כן. כן. מה צריך לעשות? כאילו, אנחנו צריכים חוק חדש לנשים? בוודאי, כי זה הולך ומחמיר רק. כל פעם את שומעת, זו נרצחה וזו נרצחה. בטח, חוק חדש, גבר אלים, להוציא אותו מהבית להסגר, אני יודעת, לאיזשהו אה, מקום שיסגרו אותו שם, שילמדו אותו, שלא עושים את זה. מה את חושבת האישה צריכה לעשות, כאילו הנשים באופן כללי, האם הן יכולות... קודם כל לא לשתוק, להתלונן, וב' להיות יותר חזקות ולא לתת לו להרים ידיים. ברגע שהוא מרים ידיים, שתסלק אותו מהבית. This recent rise in violence against women has led to a wave of protests and demonstrations across Israel over the last few weeks. Women's rights activists have predicted that violence against women could grow even as restrictions are eased. They argue the regime to fund a plan drawn up to battle women violence that was approved in 2017. Nothing was done about it since then, especially after the political deadlock that followed. Figures released by the charity group Women's International Zionist Organization, or WIZO, show that 10,000 restraining orders are issued each year, and the police open an average of 60 domestic violence cases on a daily basis. Over the past 14 years, it says more than 160 women have been murdered by their partners. At least 50% of the victims of abuse were already known to the welfare authorities because they've tried seeking help before. Why haven't authorities taken action to prevent domestic abuse? I think that uh, the authorities don't understand well enough uh, 
what it means to believe the victim. And there is a lot of blaming the victim. And I think that the police and the, the authorities that are not only the welfare, because of course the social workers are important, but they are not enough. They don't have enough. They, they are working until, you know, here and they, they, they can't take any more cases and it's, it's affecting how well they do the job. But these, of course, are the men and women who are the social workers are the best solution, but they, they have to work with other systems and it has to be coherent. In a high-profile case last December, a prominent humanitarian doctor was indicted for the aggravated murder of his wife, Gira Praff, who media said was a member of the Israeli Red Cross and had shot his wife, Esti Ahronovich, five times with a licensed handgun following an argument at their home. At the regime level, the broader context for domestic violence seems to be largely ignored. More than once, Israel's public security ministry, Gilad Erdogan, has been quoted describing the phenomena as a sectoral issue. He once tweeted an article challenging the data on the murders of women in Israel, calling it fictitious and designed to further hidden agenda. On May 3rd, the Knesset's Welfare Committee held an emergency meeting to discuss the rise in violence against women since the start of the pandemic. During its discussions, participants heard reports about two women who committed suicide after being subjected to violence during the lockdown. Both women were unable to convince the authorities to save them and remove them from the home. Is the regime responsible for this type of thriving behavior? Well, uh, of course, it's really authorities, the police, uh, um, the political leaders of the country are, uh, are, are creatures of uh, this country, which has held this um, relatively negative uh, outlook upon women uh, f for a very long time. So you have cases in which women have been raped and have accused uh, their, uh, the rapists of uh, the crimes against them. And when they go to the police, they're ignored. Uh, the police may do a uh, tentative uh, investigation of charges, but they're very loath to follow through and uh, bring charges against uh, a rapist. So in Israel, the sexual violence is often unpunished. Uh, and and women are often not believed when they make these charges, and uh, politicians don't really go out of their way to uh, protect women uh, in legislation. I believe to get a perfect answer, I need a lot of time because I need to explain what's happened to women from the moment we open our eyes and really understand where we live, maybe, I don't know, five years old until 90 years old. So all that year, yeah, it's, it's not a good place for women. Um, yeah, some place is worse, but still... This is not an excuse to, to, to keep the behavior that Israel acts. Uh, we can see in one example how this has really happened. When women um, suffer from violence, a lot of women, all the time, 
nothing happened. No budget, no really a, a, a something to say about it. Bibi Netanyahu, keep, up, keep on silence all the time. Women have had enough. They've been taken to the streets to show their anger at this growing phenomena. היום יצאנו נמחות על גל גואה של אלימות כלפי נשים ורצח של שמונה נשים בזמן הקורונה ו-11 נשים ותינוקת קטנה מאז תחילת השנה ובעצם באנו כאן לדרוש את הביטחון שלנו, את הזכויות שלנו יש תקציב, תקציב לתוכנית למניעת אלימות במשפחה זה תקציב שאושר עוד ב-2017 אני נגד אלימות לנשים, גם גברים, אבל נשים בעיקר מה שקורה בארץ זה דבר נוראי בזמן האחרון Gender discrimination is ingrained in Israeli culture from an extremely young age, and the consequences of such discrimination are felt for decades after. In extreme cases, issues like sexual harassment, assault, and even domestic violence are a byproduct of the way society views women and their role. The Israeli regime has been for years urged to do more, to proactively teach gender equality, instead of allowing discrimination to thrive in schools and other public spaces. Three years ago, the Israeli regime approved a preventive five-year plan committing $15 million dollars per year to deal with the problem of violence against women. But because of petty politicking, that plan never came to fruition. Now, experts say the full plan won't be possible to implement until 2024. Despite being approved by the Labor and Welfare Committee, the full budget was never earmarked. Many victims are asking why, but to their disappointment, that question has not been answered. שזה רע מאוד, אני בכלל נגד אלימות, בכלל, נגד אלימות מכל סוג שהוא, ואני חושב שזה דבר איום ונורא, האלימות נגד נשים, ובכלל כשזה קשור בכבוד המשפחה, בעיניי זה איום ונורא, שזה קשור בכבוד המשפחה וזה במגזר. הכל מאוד מבאס לשמוע שהגענו למצב כזה, שהמון נשים כאילו בסכנה, וזה מגיע למצב כזה ש... בין לילה, כאילו את לא יודעת מה, מה יכול לקרות לך וצריך להיות ערניים יותר למצב ולנסות לצפות את זה אולי או לשים לב מה, מה אפשר לעשות כי זה באמת אה, מצב הזוי The Jerusalem Post, politics and populism, not coronavirus, are making Israelis sick. According to the author, Netanyahu is downplaying the demands of thousands of protesters who have been taken to the streets calling for the prime minister to resign. Globes, COVID-19 wrecking havoc with Tel Aviv's commercial real estate market. The degree of harm done by COVID-19 to the commercial real estate sector is beginning to become apparent. A report issued by Commercial Real Estate Services and Consultancy Group, CBRE, for the second quarter of 2020 shows that tenants have departed from tens of thousands of square meters of commercial real estate premises in Tel Aviv and that rents have gone down on average by 10%. I-24 News. Number of businesses filing for bankruptcy soars by 75%. Looks like the coronavirus pandemic is taking its toll on Israel. In June, the number of Israeli businesses filing for bankruptcy soared by 75% against the previous year. In June 2020, 2,038 businesses applied for bankruptcy, while in June 2019, the figure stood at 1,165. The Times of Israel. Nurses launch general strike in protest of manpower shortages. Hospitals and health clinics nationwide to offer reduced services as coronavirus cases surge in Israel. Nurses across Israel are angry over staff shortages that they say have made it impossible to continue their work after last-ditch talks with the Treasury seeking to prevent the strike failed. 
Ynet News. Israeli doctors slammed the regime's handling of coronavirus pandemic. In a petition, doctors argue the Israeli regime to focus health efforts on elderly and high-risk groups but allow the young to get infected and advance herd immunity while saving the economy. The petition stated that the efforts to curb the spread of the virus are hopeless and are causing a surge in deaths and serious cases, while also bringing about an economic disaster and human suffering for millions of Israeli citizens.